So here's the bolt-on bridge that they've been um, talking about installing. So this is just on a fascia, on a cliff fascia. It's just rock. Bex is in front of me, and you can feel the bridge actually vibrating. This is pretty cool. This is um, engineering-wise. This entire track, all the way through to Clyde, is um, one of the one of the highest engineered tracks and trails in all of New Zealand, and um, it's going to be a game changer. It really is. It's uh, so far we've only ridden about 12 kilometres. Just... And we just uh, going from that cliff face track right there onto another one. You know, so we're now turned around because the track hadn't been completed as we knew. They're coming up from the other end at the moment, engineering that, and they're going to join these two tracks up. So this one's another pretty incredible engineering feat. So the other end of the track that we weren't able to cycle on is mostly, <laughs> excuse me, pollen, is mostly suspension bridges, as opposed to these bolt-on arrays that are on this cliff face you can probably see some big rock up there if you're on this trail and you time it wrong wrong place wrong time um, during the big earthquake it'll be game over you've got more chance of that happening than winning lotto fantastic colors So we've just turned around, we're heading back now to the Bannockburn Vineyard region. It's a family vineyard I recently sold, which is a household name here in New Zealand. We got around 26 million for it, I believe. It's not a big vineyard, but it produces a world-class Pinot Noir wow this is just stunning this is new zealand guys and the reason why we choose to live in the south island especially wow snow on the mountains up there the color of the water that you see here is because our rivers and lakes down here are glacier fed so you get all those tannins out of the the glacier regions on top of the mountains so right up in the backdrop of our southern alps they all feed down and eventually end up running out to the ocean and this area is called lake dunstan so this is man-made here down the track further that will show you when it opens and uh, early 2021 it will take us right down to one of New Zealand's largest hydro dams, which was built in the late 80s. And um, that's what's produced this man-made lake up here, which obviously before was a river. And some of the richest gold region in the world. We've got, I think the world's second or third largest gold rush occurred here in the mid 1800s. And see a white marker there, I don't know if you can see that. been there for many years it was indicating the high water mark when they were engineering this lake in the earlier days and that road that you see the traffic on that's the new main road the old main road was about I could be wrong but around about 60 to 80 feet below that obviously underwater now and that's where the early day train train tramway ran up into Cromwell Town, which is just ahead of us there. And uh, we'll just get through this gate. Hopefully without falling off. Look at that. And, um, and that fed the gold rush and the massive growth that was occurring in the mid to late 1800s here in New Zealand as thousands um, immigrated from that front 
front brake's not working too well, I've see our seat it. Um, yeah, as um, thousands were immigrating from the British colonies um, into this part of New Zealand in the early days. Well, look at the colours. So this will be bright, vivid yellows and purples and blues in another month. They're just starting to come out now. So we're still only in early November. And we actually had snow on the hills no more than two days ago. So we're heading towards the start of summer here. And we had minus conditions only two nights ago. I'll sign off, this is getting a bit dangerous. <laughs>